encryption, so we're going to keep on talking about this topic. So this is probably the last video on encryption. Please let me know if you have any questions about anything we discuss in this video. So secure sockets layer, which is SSL, and transport layer security, TLS. So these are two methods that were discussed in IGCSE. You might recognize them. So what are these? SSL and TLS are security methods for secure websites. They use asymmetric encryption. What is disk encryption? So disk encryption will encrypt every single bit of data stored on a disk. In order to access any file on the disk, the encryption key will be required. So it can be used on backup tapes and USB flash memory and other storage media. Important for these portable media to have disk encryption as they can be lost or stolen. So you don't want people, you don't want the people who have stolen your flash drive or any other storage device that you might have to actually be able to access the information on that device. So disk encryption will prevent them from accessing that information. If the whole medium is encrypted, then anybody trying to access the data will not be able to understand it. In order to access the data, usually a password is required or a fingerprint is used to unlock the encryption. So with disk encryption, every single bit of data is encrypted on that device and you have to have a password or fingerprint in order to unlock that data, to decrypt it so that you can access it. What is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? So this is something you might recognize from IGCSC as well. So normal web pages that are fetched and transmitted, which are not encrypted, use hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP. This means that anybody that intercepts the data or web pages being sent over HTTP would be able to read the contents of that data. So this is a problem especially when passwords, usernames, credit card data, and other sensitive data is being sent. HTTPS, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, is the encryption standard used for secure web pages. It uses SSL and TLS to encrypt and decrypt info being sent and received. It's used by banks when a user logs onto online banking. So the difference between HTTP and HTTPS, the data sent across uh, using HTTP, that data is readable, it hasn't been encrypted, but information being sent by HTTPS, that data is encrypted, and if that data is intercepted, unless that person has the decryption key, that data will look meaningless to them. So how do you know if a website has SSL being applied to it? So visually, in our textbook, they want us to know two ways. You have the padlock symbol, so activated padlock, and you have the HTTPS in your address or URL. So these are two visual ways to check that SSL is being applied to the website that you're using. In other words, it's a secure website. How does a browser use encryption? So when a browser requests a secure page, it will check the digital certificate to ensure that it is trusted and valid and that the certificate is related to the site from which it is coming. The browser then uses the public key to encrypt a new symmetric key that is sent to the web server. The browser and the web server can then communicate using a symmetric encryption key, which is faster than a symmetric encryption. So just an example, or just restating this again, um, the web browser would request the digital certificate from the web server. The web browser then uses the web server's public key to encrypt a new symmetric key, and then it sends that symmetric key to the web server. So the web server then uses this private key that only the web server knows. It uses this private key to decrypt the new symmetric key. 
So now the web server has now the same symmetry key that was sent to it by the sender. So the browser and now the web server both have the same symmetric key. That means they can now use symmetric encryption. So the browser and the web server now communicate using the same symmetric key. So just to sum it up, so using ACE symmetric encryption, so the web server has a public key that the browser can access. So what it does is using that public key, it encrypts its own symmetric key because it wants to use symmetric encryption between the browser and the web server because symmetric encryption is faster. So by encrypting this symmetric key, it can then send it over a network to the web server, which then uses its own private key to decrypt that encrypted symmetric key so that only now the web browser and hopefully only the web server, hopefully only they have access to these two symmetric keys, which are the same. So then it can use symmetric encryption to communicate. What is email encryption? So email encryption uses asymmetric encryption. Means that the recipient must have the private key that matches the public key used to encrypt the email. In order for this to work, both the sender and the recipient need to send each other a digitally signed message that will add the person's digital certificate to the contact for that person. And encrypting an email will also encrypt its attachments. So lastly, how does encryption protect data? So again, it only scrambles the data so that if it is found, it cannot be understood. It does not stop the data from being intercepted, stolen or lost. It just helps the data from being understood. However, strong 256-bit AES encryption is virtually impossible for somebody to decrypt. So that's just an example. Alright, that's the end of the lesson. Please let me know if you have any questions.